We got a huge development in the ultra-leftist George Soros' global web of influence, or as it turns out, waning influence. It's just been announced that his Open Society Foundations, which provide hundreds of millions of dollars to tyrannical globalist institutions, are indeed leaving Europe. That's right. George Soros' Open Society Foundations have announced that they're significantly reducing all operations in the European Union. In a letter sent out to their various funded organizations in Europe, OSF officials said, quote, the new approved strategic direction provides for withdrawal and termination of large parts of our current work within the European Union, shifting our focus and allocation of resources to other parts of the world. OSF, or the Open Society Foundations, will largely terminate funding within the European Union and further funding will be extremely limited. Now, this move from Europe is happening just weeks after it was reported that Soros' foundations were experiencing mass layoffs following the recent leadership transition to George Soros' son, Alexander. The Open Society Foundations, founded by Soros back in 1979, which comprised the heart of Soros' vast international NGO networks, recently announced plans to cut almost half of their global workforce. In an emailed statement, the organization did indeed confirm that they've made the difficult decision to reduce their workforce by at least 40%. Now, of course, Soros' organization has since been trying to, frankly, spin this, claiming that the layoffs and operational changes are intended to enhance its ability to counter the threats faced by open and free societies around the world. But... Many have noted that these massive cuts and now this withdrawal from the EU, it all raises the question of the continued relevance and influence of Soros' infamous plans for a new world order. For example, the biggest panic over this withdrawal is being felt in what's left of leftist organizations in the nation of Hungary. With little to no funding from the Open Society Foundations, there's virtually no infrastructure to keep left-wing Hungarian organizations afloat. So there's already some pretty significant ripple effects coming out of this decision to withdraw from the EU. Now, this retreat from Europe, it's frankly been in the making for some time. Soros actually had to relocate the headquarters for the OSF to Berlin after basically getting kicked out of his home country of Hungary. So back in December of 2018, Soros' Open Society Foundations announced that it had become simply impossible to work in what they called the repressive atmosphere of Hungary and that they were indeed picking up and moving their operations to Berlin. Now, this was in response to the massive landslide win of Viktor Orban, their prime minister in their parliamentary elections. It was his third win in a row, and he campaigned on what's commonly referred to as the Stop Soros Law which penalizes all NGOs that seek to undermine Hungary's border security by assisting immigrants and refugees in crossing the border and getting into Hungary. And the penalty, which involved massive fines and taxes, simply made it impossible for the Open Society Foundations to continue their operations in Hungary. Viktor Orban also oversaw the expulsion of Soros' Central European University from Budapest. The Hungarian government basically refused to grant accreditation to the university, which forced them to close their doors and leave Hungary altogether. And then right around the same time in August of 2018, the nation of Poland deported a top Soros organizer and were able to have her effectively banned from entering into the EU. And so it's no coincidence that as Soros's list of allies grew thinner and thinner in Europe, the decision was made to abandon Europe altogether. But as it turns out, things are getting even worse for Soros. He's fast making a new enemy, and it's one that promises to expel his vast network of NGOs from more than just Europe. Wait until you see this. But first, gang, you've got to click on that link below and get in on the amazing buying spree going on right now all over the world with gold and silver. And just days from now, dozens of nations will be meeting in South Africa to discuss a new trade currency backed by gold. And you don't want to miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get in on the action. And we've got some amazing friends to this channel who can help you do just that. We partnered with the top-rated precious metals company, Gold Co., who've helped patriots across the nation move over a billion dollars 
into gold and silver. You heard that right. That's a billion with a B. They're absolutely amazing. Click on that link below right now. And for those with retirement accounts, get this. The Patriots over at Gold Co. are offering you up to $10,000 in free silver when opening up a qualified RA account. And for cash buyers, you're going to love this. You can get bonus silver just for making a purchase. So if you buy $15,000 worth of precious metals, you're going to get $750 in bonus silver. If you buy $25,000 in precious metals, you're going to get $1,200 worth of bonus silver. But that's only as long as supply lasts. So don't wait. Click on that link below. This game, this is your opportunity to get in on the ground floor, this massing buying spree of gold and silver all over the world. The timeless value of gold and silver has never been more valuable than now. So click on that link below right now. The nation of China has officially declared George Soros enemy number one, labeling him a global terrorist with some reports that he's even being called the son of Satan by Chinese media. NTD News, which is a Chinese American news organization, is reporting that the Chinese Communist Party newspaper, the Global Times, is punching back against George Soros's latest string of criticisms against the Chinese government with an utterly brutal piece accusing Source of being, quote, the most evil person in the world. Now, if you don't know, since 2019 or so, Soros has actually been a very vocal critic of China at the World Economic Forum that year. Soros accused President Xi of being the single biggest threat against open societies on the globe. He said, quote, China is not the only authoritarian regime in the world, but it is indeed the wealthiest, strongest, and technologically most advanced. And thus, it has inordinate influence in the world. And in order to try to stifle that influence, Soros has been actively attempting to frustrate Chinese technology companies from dominating the 5G telecommunications market, saying in effect that it would be, quote, an unacceptable security risk for the rest of the world. Soros has also criticized China's mass surveillance system, the social credit system, saying that it gives them total control over the people of China, which, of course, is rather odd, given that Soros has no problem with such control when it comes to COVID crackdowns among Western governments. And so the Global Times, which is more or less the mouthpiece of the CCP, the Times has responded with an utterly brutal piece. And the Chinese government has also accused Soros of colluding with Jimmy Lai who's the founder of the Hong Kong media company Apple Daily, to try to actually start a revolution against the CCP in Hong Kong. So obviously things have gotten pretty bad between Soros and China. And if China adopts a similar playbook as Viktor Orban did with Soros, the Open Society Foundations may find that their leaving Europe is just the beginning of their ultimate cancellation. Are you ready to join the resistance because I'm leading a group of dedicated, courageous patriots who can lead a spearhead into the heart of the secular globalist establishment. We punish Bud Light and Target, driven CNN and the legacy media to near bankruptcy, forced BlackRock to backtrack on ESG, and now we're seeing our conservative-dominated Supreme Court ending affirmative action and protecting religious liberty. In my Insiders Club, I show you concrete steps to take locally and online that will only keep this mass uprising going until the battle is won. Don't wait. Click the link in my description below and join my Courageous Patriots Insiders Club today.